Y'all know what time it is. It's a big one today. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I've been running hard. I had to get over here to the studio. Because, man, we got to go in and we're going to expose one of the greatest, greatest deceptions of all times. We're going to show you blatantly how Satan has went about and used the scribes and the translators to deceive the entire world. This is Blockbuster. You've got to hit the like button. Hit the like, smash the like, smash the likes. You got to hit the share button. You got to drop your name, your city and country, city and state. Let everybody know you love Yahuwah. You represent Yahuwah. We're going to burn this thing up today. I'm telling you right now, you're going to have to put your seat belt on. You probably need to put on some straps. You know those things when you get in the roller coaster? You got the seat belt, and then they put that big bar strap over top of you. You're going to need that on this one. I'm telling you right now. So who are the three people or the three different platforms you're going to share this with? If you look down, if you haven't subscribed already to our YouTube channel or Facebook, hit the subscribe or the follow button. Hit the bell notification. Put it on always because we drop bombs in here. We drop truth bombs. In the name of Yahuwah, we tear it up consistently. This is not a place where we tiptoe around the truth. We stand by our name, promote the truth. So if you love the truth, you're going to love what we're here talking about today. And, and what's so awesome about this, this is another excerpt from the truth scriptures translation that we're going to make available for free as a, as a free download. Now, can you imagine when we drop these different free downloads, when the entire book comes out, what it's going to be like? It's going to shake. I'm telling you, we're going to shake up and change the world. So I'm getting ready here. Are y'all ready? So send some shout, shout out. See, my wife just joined us. What's going on? My wife, she's over in the other room. She's taking care of our son's education. You know, he online schools. And all of a sudden, she sees me running out. She runs out. And now we're on the front line for Yahuwah. Yahua. Don't y'all love that name? There's no name like this. There's something, just something about Yahuwah's name. So I'm just letting us warm it up. Make sure you're sharing it out. I'm going to send some shout outs while we're getting going. Man, I got me some good fresh tea, hot tea in here. Put some incredible. Ooh, what I got in there today? I got some of that raw. See, down here in Columbia, they got some of that raw pulp from the sugar cane. It's another level than sugar. I can't, I can't say it's sugar. It's like another level. It's pure. You know, it's got all the carbons that you need in that sugar that doesn't turn into fat. You can tell because you don't feel bad when you when you eat this type of uh, sugar. I don't even want to call it sugar. Panella. Is that what I call it? Is that what it's called, babe? Put that in the chat. What's going on? My dad knows because he was just here. He just got back. Yeah, my dad just got back to Kentucky. He just said, Yahuwah is number one. He's learning so much and he's getting so fired up because the seed that my dad planted in me, which is what y'all should be doing for your children, even if your children are older, they might come around. They might not. But the babies that are coming up, they for sure going to carry this word on. And the seed that my dad planted in me years ago where he was willing to buck the system. He was willing to ask questions. My grandfather was a deacon in the Baptist church. My great grandfather, which means that was his father and grandfather. He was willing to ask some questions. That's right, baby. I got some panella. That's another level of sugar, baby. That's not normal. Mm, that panella. If y'all can get yourself some real Colombian panella, it's on. So we're going in. I'm going to send a shout out. Who's coming in? We got my sister Ebony Carden is in the building. Michelle Nicholas is in the building coming in from the great Netherlands. Sue, what's going on, Sue? KM. Wow. Our sister Amber's in here. Chris Roy, what's going on? I haven't seen Las Vegas, Nevada. We moved from Las Vegas a few years ago. Loved it. Brian Robertson's in the building. Elisa, my sister Tenna's here. Sylvia. Leslie McClain coming in from Canada, Ontario. I love Canada. Love it, love it, love it. Lisa Austin, our sister. Leslie. Joe Cardon, Cardin, my brother Joe. Catherine Tillman, my sister. Jermaine Ford, our brother's in here. Yamani, our sister's in the building. Doja. 
coming in from California. That's a new name in here. All right. Donna Steele, one of our, she's still on the front line with us. That's a good name for you, Donna. Donna, I'm still on the front line for Yahoo. I love it. Randy, our brother from Missouri. Randy Moon. Y'all Malik, what's going on? Some new names in here. Y'all got a bunch of new names. Part of the 144. That's right. Theo. Yahoo 144K. Hey, y'all, we got, we got videos exploding all over the place. We got people that are sharing our videos. It's going nuts on TikTok, by the way. We're going to drop the whole five series on TikTok today, too. Make sure y'all follow us on TikTok. But we got videos over on TikTok that's got into the hundreds of thousands of views in a matter of two days from people sharing our videos. That's how this thing is. I mean, hundreds of thousands of views. I'm not playing. Emily, Dwayne in the building. Yeah, I see y'all. See my pops in here. Okay. Curtis is in here. Good to see you, brother Curtis. Yeah, Dwayne Gordon is in here. Rodney is in the building. Rodney Liddell, steady. Susie, good to see you. My sister Sherry, consistent. Sherry, part of our team and promote the truth. Y'all show us some love. J.E. Harris. Hey, we dropped J.E. Harris's. We dropped your testimonial into the into the Telegram group. If y'all not in the Telegram group, you're missing out on everything. Because we drop everything there pretty much first. So go to pttgram, pttgram.com. Go over to pttgram.com and join the test. It's free. Don't cost you anything. And you get to know all the stuff. If you're going to be a disciple, don't you want to know the stuff? Yeah. Come on. Come on, fam. All right, I'm going in. From Ghana, we got, we got Elizabeth. Our sister Elizabeth from Ghana is in here. All right, I just let it warm up. The reason I had to let it warm up because I want the algorithm popping. So one last time, everybody hit the like button. Everybody hit the share button. If you're watching the recording, drop a comment. Your name, what city and country or city and state you're from, and put that you love Yahoo. You need to represent because we want to see how many different countries around the world. We already got over 40 countries, over 40 states that have claimed they love Yahuwah. We are spreading the word, being faithful now. Y'all ready to get into it? If y'all want us to burn it down and tear down deceptions, tear down the false, here's what we got to do every time. Drop the fire emojis in the chat. Let's put some tear it down. I want to see, once I see at least 10 fire emojis, 10, I got to see 10 fire emojis, different people dropping the fire emojis. We're going to go in. Oh, we got Thailand in here, Divine Scout. What's your name, Divine Scout? That's a new country. Thailand's in here. I got to add that to the list. Got to add it to the list. Come on, y'all. Drop some fire emojis in here because we got Thailand that just came on as a new country. I'm pretty, yes, that's a new country. That is a new country. Thailand has just come on. We got fire emojis dropping. Do we got at least 10 people with the fire emojis? Come on. Come on, I see it. Come on, I see it. All right, I see it. Now, let me grab something because we're going to go grab some word here. Everybody, if you've got any type of translation, I'm going to prove the deception and the distortion from any translation you want to pick up. But I'm going to start out with Hazum, and I'm going to go over to chapter 12, and I'm going to read this. Chapter 12, verse 9. Hazun is revelation. Hazun is revelation. Chapter 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was thrown out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan. That's the adversary, the accuser, right? He goes about and leads the entire world astray. He was thrown to the earth and his messengers were thrown out with him. You got to understand this. If y'all go look at the video, the three W's, you'll understand that Shatan, who people have been calling Lucifer, I still got to do a training about his real name. He was thrown out of the heavens along with the third of the 
of the messengers. A third, fam. A third of the messengers were thrown out with him. That's a lot. And where were they thrown? You got to ask yourself. So this is how you progress through being a disciple and making disciples and tearing down strongholds. He was thrown to the earth along with the third of the messengers. And what, they're, what they do is they go about and they deceive the entire world. Now, how are they deceiving the world? That's the big question. That's the big question. We got to deal with how, how exactly how do they deceive the whole world? Because we hear it, right? Everybody hears the fact that, oh, they deceive the entire world. Okay, okay. How are they deceiving the entire world? That's the question. I'm over setting this up. Y'all see me setting it up because y'all know I'm going in. I got to get all my documents because I'm going to put a document on the screen for y'all. So y'all will never forget this day. You're never going to forget this. I told my son, I said, son, you'll be talking about this to your kids and your kids' kids if Yahuwah didn't come back. You're going to be talking about this day. This is the day we changed all kind of things in the spiritual realm. This is a day that Satan hates for us to be talking. <laughs> He'd rather us not talk today because he knows that right here, right now, He's being completely exposed. What about that? Right here, right now. Think about the fact that he was thrown to the earth and goes about and deceives the entire world. Yahuwah, through Yahuhanan, the emissary, the apostle John, Yahuhanan, he's telling us that Satan is here on the earth and he goes about and deceives everybody. And we got to ask ourselves, how does he deceive people? Well, what would be the most like incredible way he could pull it off? What if he, let me reach over. Y'all know what I'm going to grab for. I'm going to grab this old piece of trash. What if he grab, what if he was able to work through something that people would think is the word of the most high, but he creates a counterfeit And he does it so subtly that everybody accepts it as truth. There are entire religious organizations who say that the most accurate translation and the most trustworthy translation of all time is the King James Version. And this is trash. Like we see it on the front of it. There's two words that are both pagan words on the front of this. And many of us grew up with this. Holy, holy is a pagan word. Bible, Biblio is a pagan deity. Fred Swizzy. And Francois showing up in here today, my brother, Yahuwah. Look, if he would take the time If you were Satan and you were the adversary, what could be one way you could pull off some of the greatest deceptions and mislead people ever? What if you just took the word that Yahuwah was putting out and then you figured out how to make a counterfeit where it looks close enough to the real thing that people would buy it and spend it? What if? That happened. Well, it happened. This happened. This is not like a guess. I'm holding it up. And it's the most distributed version of the quote Bible in the world. And nobody really, I should say, most people never really stops and says, who is King James? Why did King James need his version? Was King James a follower of the most high? Was the King James guard the commandments? The King James call on the most high and promote his name like it's commanded in the scriptures? Did he do that? No, he did not. He did quite the opposite. He even had one of the books in here 
The book of James, you know, is a lie because there was no J. He even had a book changed after his name. He took the book of Yaakob and changed it to James. So we know that Satan is working diligently through these trash versions. Now, that's enough. We're done with this. Because as I was translating a Pasayim, the book of Ephesians, and I got to the second chapter, I said that, and I started working. And I got down to a particular verse that I'm going to share with y'all today. And then I'm going to give y'all a power guide to use. So what I'm going to show you today we're going to make available to you for free on the Promote the Truth website. Underneath the True Scriptures Project, you'll scroll down and you'll see where you can get free downloads. We've got several of them there now. And I'm going to show you how the world as a whole lives lawless. And what did Yahushua HaMashiach say when he walked on the earth? He said, many will come to me on that day and say, Master, Master. Have we not cast a prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name? Even healed the sick. We've done all these miracles in your name. And Yahushua HaMashiach says, when you meet me in that day as Yahuwah Mashiach, I'm going to say to you, away from me. I never knew you because you lived a life of lawlessness. You were workers of lawlessness. So you cannot be with me because I did not come to abolish the law. I came to shine a light on the new covenant of the law, to fulfill it, to bring you to myself because you were separated from me. That's what's going to happen. And so I'm going to pull up and I don't even know what y'all going to do with this. We're going to walk down through it. That's why I'm doing this at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today. So no matter what time you see in this, I started this at noon, high noon. I'm going in. So I don't even know how y'all going to handle this. Let me get this pulled up right. I don't know how y'all going to handle it. Everybody got the seatbelts on? Because it's going to get strong in here. And some people say, hey, man, why Jay get so passionate? Sometimes he be yelling in there because I love Yahuwah and I'm here to tear it down. And I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm here to please the most high and get my brothers and sisters that are part of the 144 to get running with me. To get on the front line. That's all I'm concerned about. Who are the 144 that's not afraid of the opinions of humans? Get on up here. On the front line. Here I go. Y'all ready? Set. Boom. Put your seat belts on. Yeah. We got. Apasaim. It's the real name of Ephesians. Apasaim. With the Peshitta. Anabari text. And in one of the verses. I added the 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 Yuani that you know of as the Greek in one of the verses. Are y'all ready? <laughs> Are you sure you can handle this? Huh? All right. Chapter two is where we begin to tear it down. We will change the world today. We change the world. Y'all need to, y'all gonna spread this all over the place. This needs to go to every single pastor, every single church, every single organized religious organization, everybody that picks up a thing called the Bible needs to know the truth. Here's the truth. This is the correct, most accurate translation that has ever existed outside of what you see is the Arami and the Abari, and you need to know how to translate that, even if you know Aramaic. In Hebrew. Here we go. Chapter 2, verse 1. Ephesians. Apasayim. 
You used to be dead because of your offenses and sins. Think about that. Isn't that true? You used to be dead. You used to live like the people from this world, according to the evil ruler of the power of the air. This is the spirit that is now working in the people who are disobedient. All right. So everybody that's disobedient, they're working under this power of the evil one. Who's working in the air. Let me tell y'all what that means. In the air means your thoughts. That's why your thoughts and your words, when they go out into the air, they create whatever you think. See, and Satan knows this, that Yahuwah set it up, that the way we think, as a, as a person thinks, so they are. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Once you think and you speak, it permeates in the air. And now we've been told that Satan has been thrown to the earth with a third of his messengers with them, and they're waiting to see you think any type of negative, any type of negative thoughts, those messengers have a mission to give you exactly what you were thinking. That's why I loot, I should say not loot, Eub, Job, said the thing that I thought that I feared the most has come true. So we got to be careful what we think about because this ruler is in the air waiting to snatch our thoughts. We got to think on the good things. Everybody say the great thing. We got to think on what's, what's just, what's good, what's kind, what's love. We got to think on the most high things. Verse three, all of us once lived like them in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and what? Mind. By our, by our very nature, we were children of wrath. Wow. By our very nature, we were children of wrath. That means we were going to be destroyed just like everyone else. Y'all getting this? Just like everyone else. Hold on. Hold on. Verse four. But Allah, who is rich in compassion because of his great love for us. Who? Because of Allah and his compassion which is driven by his great love for us, even when we were dead in our sins, he made us alive together with Messiah by his compassion. Six, verse six, look at the power we got when we roll with Yahuwah Messiah. Look at the power that happens. Verse six, we get empowered here. He raised us up with him. With who? Are we hearing this? Huh? He raised us up with Yahuwah Mashiach. We are raised up with the Mashiach family. And he made us sit with Yahuwah Mashiach. Where? In the heavenly places. Right now. What did Yahuwah Mashiach say? When he was on earth as Yahushua HaMashiach, he says, I go to prepare a place for you so that you will be where I am. Everybody's thinking that that's going to happen sometime later. We are connected with him now. As he sits on high in the heavenly places, he's got us connected with him. We are there already. Hallelujah. He got us there with him already in energy, in spirit. Watch verse seven. He did this so that in the age to come, he would show us the exceeding riches of his favor and kindness toward us in Yahuwah Mashiach. So Allah, the father, 
He wanted to show us the, his rich favor and kindness through Yahuwah Mashiach. Now, hold on. Verse eight, through much compassion, you have been saved by faith and not from yourselves or of yourselves or through yourselves. It is a gift from Alua. So we got this gift that was given to us through faith, through faith in what? We did it yesterday. Thank you, sister Leslie. For that super, hey, we did, hey, we did it yesterday. We talked about it. We got to believe that Yahusha is Yahuwah. That's the faith that we have to have to get this compassion. I'm telling y'all. Now watch, watch this. Verse nine. This is not given through your works alone. So it's saying, yeah, you got to work. You got to do great works, but that can't, that won't save you. No, so and this is done so that no one could boast. Nobody can say I'm working harder than you for the kingdom. You see, nobody can get away with it from there. Can't happen. All right. Now watch what happens here. Watch the progression because it's gonna get hot. <laughs> Verse ten. And while I'm reading this, I want everyone that is choosing to be a student of Yahuwah to know Him. To be sure and secure in your salvation, in your mind, in your heart. I want everybody to find the purpose of why this is being written. This is Shaul writing. You see, he's writing to the people. What? Of Apasai, Apasi. Ephesus, they call it. So he's writing to this city they call Ephesus, Apasi, and he's writing a letter to them. Verse 10, we are Alua's masterpiece. Do y'all see this edification that Brother Shaul has given us? He wants us to understand how special we are in Yahuwah. We are Alua's masterpiece created in Yahuwah Mashiach to do mighty works. You see, most people that are listening to me are playing too low in Yahuwah. You're playing too low. You're created to do mighty works because Yahuwah, Mashiach, when he was Yahusha HaMashiach on earth, what did he say? Greater things shall you do than I've been doing. So now there's reinforcement from Brother Shaul here. He's saying we were created to do mighty works, which Alua designed a long time ago. Why? So that this would be the way we live our lives. It just becomes a common thing that we do miracles. It's just common. You see, we got to empower people to raise some people from the dead. Let's shock the world. Let's get the blind to see. Let's get the cripple walking. Where is all those miracles at? At least that, because he said we're going to do greater things than those. But he's waiting on the body to become one. Watch what the 144 do. The 144 are going to tell people to speak that couldn't speak, and they're going to start talking. Watch what happens. Verse 11, remember that those of you who were Guyim, make your notes here, because some of y'all are going, what does Guyim, Guyim mean? That means Gentiles. That's the proper word for Gentiles. Gentiles would be considered uncircumcised people. People who didn't practice believing getting circumcised eight, di eight days after the male was born. Remember that those of you who were Guyin, Gentiles, used to be called the uncircumcised by those who call themselves circumcised. Or Yahudim. Okay. Are y'all getting y'all getting the point? Shaul is telling them, remember who you are. Understand the power you've been given. All so far in these verses, through 11 verses, he's just edifying and he's uplifting us and getting us to step into our power. Verse 12, at that time, you were completely separated 
from the Mashiach, excluded from citizenship in Israel. So now we got a, we got a, a misprint there. We'll clean that up. I just saw that. Again, y'all could tell we're taking it straight over. It hadn't been completely scrubbed, but it'll be fixed before it goes up. Now watch this. Excluded from citizenship in Israel. So now we know he's talking to the Guyin primarily. So he's primarily talking to Gentiles here. Y'all got that? So we got to know whose letter and what talk and what speeches for who. He's now specifically talking to the Guyin, the Gentiles. Okay, he says, and strangers to the promised covenants from Alua. Again, that's a little misprint there. We'll fix that. Oh, make it an L. Alua, meaning you had no hope and were left alone without Alua in this world. So he's saying to the Guyin, the Gentiles, you didn't have a path to be able to get to Alua, to get to, to the Messiah, to the Messiah. You had no path. It was through the Mashiach sacrifice that gave you the path. Now pay attention, everybody. I'm getting closer to the explosive verse that's going to shock the world. Y'all ready? Verse 13. But now in Yahuwah Mashiach, not one verse in the not one translation in the world will say Yahuwah Mashiach, except true scriptures. Telling you. And it's the correct translation. But now in Yahuwah Mashiach, you that were once far away have been brought close to Alua through what? The blood of the Mashiach. So now he's exposing family how everybody gets there. Now pay attention to what he's going to do here because we're going to go to explosion. We're only two verses away from explosion. <laughs> Here we go. Verse 14. It is Mashiach who is our peace, who provided a way for both the Yahudim. Y'all catching it now? Now he's talking not just to the Guyin, the Gentiles, anybody that's sitting around that's from the Yahudim. Quote, who do people say Jews, right? Yahudim, followers of Yahuwah. Watch this. Who, watch. He provided a way for both the Yahudim and the Guyin, the Gentiles, to be what? One, by breaking down that, what divided us. There's another little, make a little note on that, team. We'll fix that. But breaking down what divided us or that that divided us? That'll be fixed. Now watch. You can tell I'm focused to get to 15. This is where we blow the world up. Through, through his flesh, this is the most accurate translation of verse 15 in the world. Through his flesh, he canceled the old covenant with its highly or underlined ordinances. I want y'all to highly underline that. So through his flesh, he canceled the old covenant with its ordinances so that he could make one new group of people out of the two groups of people. In this way, he made peace for us. Do y'all see what's going on? Now y'all get everybody going to pick up every translation they can pick up of Ephesians chapter two, verse 15. And we're going to start posting it in the comments. And you tell me the difference of what we just put down here versus whatever. I'm talking about everyone, even the ones that have removed the pagan names. Watch the, watch how we're going to expose this nonsense of Greek translation to the world. Watch how we're going to expose this to the world. Now you see, I've got 
A word in Aramaic, in Aramaic highlighted. You see that word there? I've got another word in Abari that happens to be the same word in Aramaic. Aramaic. So Abari is Hebrew. I got it highlighted. Do y'all see it there? Then I put the Greek down there. I just did this. That's why I was running a few minutes behind because I just put this together. All right. Then I got two Greek words that are supposed to mean that one Hebrew word and that one Aramaic word. All right. So all of the scholars out there, all of the theological schools, the seminaries, they follow those two, they follow those Greek translations. And here specifically, they take these two words in Greek and they change it to something that pushes people to become lawless. The whole purpose was to end the division and provide a way for the Gui and the Gentiles to be united with the pathway of the Yahudim that followed and believed in Yahuwah Mashiach. That's the purpose of what Shaul's talking about. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scroll on down to the power guide I created for y'all. And I'm going to tear this into shreds. But I want you to pay attention to the highlighted Aramaic word I've got there. Then the highlight, highlighted Hebrew word I've got there. And then the two Greek words I've got highlighted there. And I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to pass this up and then we'll come back and finish this chapter. But I'm going to go down to this power guide, okay? And we're going to expose Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. Right from the Greek translations, right from old King James. We get ready to expose it to the world, to every preacher and pastor sitting in the pulpit who's teaching that the commandments of Yahuwah have been nailed to some cross. We're going to expose them and lay them bare right here. So I'm going to read King James via the Greek translation, which everyone I'm come from. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15, quote exactly from the King James. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity of, even the law of commandments. <laughs> the Greek words there that you saw me highlight were ton namon. That's the Greek words you saw me highlight. So they take that word there, law of commandments, comes from the Greek words ton namon. I'm going to finish reading. Contained in the what? Ordinances. They even got the audacity to throw in ordinances. For to make in himself of twain, that means of two, one new man, so making peace. Okay, let's go get the true scriptures, which we just read. Through his flesh, he canceled the old covenant with its ordinances. See, they snuck in up in the King James, the word ordinances. The problem is they added a word, words, tone them on. Okay? But even though they added tone them on, we're going to blow them up here because the Aramaic and the Hebrew word there is namusa. Namusa. And I'm going to show you what Namusa means. So that he could make one new group of people out of the two groups of people. In this way, he made peace for us. The Aramaic word Namusa translates to what family? Ordinances or decrees. Ordinances or decrees. Are y'all with me? The Hebrew word happens to be the same exact pronunciation as the Aramaic word, namusa. 
And I've got the character, I've got the letters there for you, the alphabet. Translates into ordinances and decrees. Or decrees. The UNE Greek used in Ephesians 2.15, they use toned mnemon, which translates specifically into rules, behaviors, or general laws. It's very general. It's rules. It's ordinances. But it ain't even, they don't even use their word ordinances there. Because I taught y'all last week or two ago from Colossians, y'all remember? 2.14, I showed y'all where they used the Greek word dogmason, which translates into decrees and, or and ordinances, how they try to use that word to cancel out the commandments. So now we've got them two times using multiple different Greek words to do everything in their power to cancel out the commandments. But even the words, the words tone them on only means rules, behaviors, or general laws. And even if they were trying to stay congruent with Colossians 2.14, they would at least try to use the word dogmason. But we found out that that only means decrees or ordinances. Now, are y'all ready? Are you really ready for the fire? Are you really ready to blow everything up in these Greek translations? Here you go. The Abari word for law, as it relates to the commandments, never forget what I am teaching you in the name of Yahuwah right now. This is never going to change. Like Yahuwah never changes what I'm teaching you right now. And the spirit of Yahuwah is all over me. I can feel him run up and down my spine and my body. The Abari Hebrew word for law, as it relates to the commandments, is Torah, a.k.a. Torah. If there is ever a time that word law has anything to do with the commandments, right? Right? You're going to have, it's going to involve the Torah. That's the whole body of his commandments, which includes the food laws, which includes the festivals. That brings, that makes up the Torah. But if we work straight towards the Ten Commandments, everybody, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Y'all got me tore up right now. If we're going to deal with the Ten Commandments, I'm going to give you the Hebrew words that relate to Ten Commandments. They're Asherat. Abdarut. Abda Barut, I should say. Asherat Abda Barut. That's the Ten Commandments. I'm not done. If I'm dealing with the Ten Commandments, if I'm going to say specifically, if I'm dealing with the Ten Commandments, we're going to go to Asherat Abda Barut. Now, watch what happens here with the Greek. The Greek word for law as it relates to the commandments, is in, in tole. Plural will be in toles. The Greek word as it relates to the law for the commandments. If it's ever talking about the commandments anytime in the Greek, if it's relating to the Ten Commandments, it's going to have the word in tole there or in toles, commandments. The word in the Greek New Testament, this word, in tole, everybody paying attention? This word, in, in, this word in the Greek, in tole, is never ever used in regard to abolishing the commandments. 
I challenge anybody to go deal with that. Any of you Greek scholars, any of you Christian churches, just don't go in here talking about it. Tell us where you want to wire $10,000 to. There's a $10,000 challenge that if you can prove that the word in tole is ever used in the Greek to abolish the commandments, you got yourself a $10,000 challenge. Can't prove it anywhere. Check this out. The Greek words for the Ten Commandments are deca, that means ten, and toles, laws or commandments. Deca and toles. What's so unique about these two words? These words are never, that should be even, never even used in the Greek New Testament ever. In their own New Testament. They never put the words deca and toles in the Greek New Testament, ever. So you tell me, if the Greek word for law as it relates to the commandments is in tole, and every Greek scholar knows what I'm talking about. Every one of them know. You tell me why. Here, in the Greek, right there in verse, in chapter 2 of Ephesians, verse 15, why is the word in tole not placed there? Why is it not there? Because it's not talking about the commandments there. So you've now done exactly what Yahushua HaMashiach said when he walked on the earth. He said, you set aside the commandments of my father. I just proved it. I just proved what Yahushua said. You set aside the commandments of my father for the traditions of men, for your own traditions. We just proved that they have taken Yahuwah's commandments and set them aside. And they're using these Greek words that do not have anything whatsoever to do with the Ten Commandments that are eternal. And even in the Aramit, Shaul is not talking about the Ten Commandments. When he says, Namusa, when Shaul was writing this, he literally wrote the words Namusa. They had to translate it over into Greek. But what he wrote was Namusa. He was talking about the ordinances or decrees, all those regulations, all those little sacrifices. Shaul was saying through Yahushua's flesh, he canceled the old covenant with its ordinances. And the reason he did that is so that he, Yahusha, who is now Yahuwah Mashiach, could make one new group of people out of the two new groups of people. What are y'all going to do with this? Huh? What can we say? Except, hallelujah. That's it. Nobody's taking up that challenge. The thing that I got and have had for years, and have studied for years, is the Aramaic, the Aramaic, is the Abari, the Hebrew. And guess what else I got? And study, and am well versed on, the Uani, the Greek. Oh, I just, you notice, I just put it in here one time, because I don't even like really dealing with it, other than to disprove over and over. It's such a pagan language when you refer it over to the scriptures. I don't even like putting it up much, but I can put it in under. I can break down every single verse and show you lie after lie. I can help show you the 400,000 errors where they did this. You know, King James and the like. Now, hold on. 
Everybody, before I move on past verse 15, y'all know how we do it. Go get every translation, start copying and pasting it or typing it in the chat. We're going to deal with verse 15. What does your verse 15 say in any translation? I'm going to show you how everybody's been influenced by the Greek. Everybody's been led astray. Put it in the chat. What, trans, what translation do y'all want to, and just put the name of the translation. So put verse 15, chapter two of Ephesians and put what translation. And I'm not moving ahead till I see at least five or six get in the chat. We're not going ahead till we see it. Cause I'm going to prove to the world. Mm -hmm. I'm going to prove to the world the lies. All right. We got the, yeah, the English standard version. Thank you, Elisa. She put, by abolishing the law of commandments, lie, see that lie right there? Expressed in ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace. We got the another version. Y'all know I don't, if they remove the pagan names, I'm always respectful. But here's another version that says, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, but look what they put in that version. The commands of statutes contained in dogma. Why play games there with the word commands? See, I don't understand that. I don't, I don't understand that. See, that's Greek influence in my opinion. All right, here goes another one. This is having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Oh my goodness. Do y'all see that version that Amber House put in there? Amber, you see what they put? The Torah of the commands in dogma. The average person is going to think that means the Ten Commandments. Y'all know it. Why play games with that? Y'all understand? What are you doing putting the word commands and commandments in that translation when they don't even come close to being there? There goes the King James. We just did that one. Come on, somebody give me another version or two before we move on. I want y'all to see this. Look at this. Y'all see, look, Amber, like this is crazy. This is how those pastors in the pulpits teach everybody that there's somebody named Jesus that took the commandments of the creator and nailed them to some cross. This is one of the, I'm telling y'all, Colossians 2.14 and Ephesians 2.15 are the two verses primarily they use to create a bunch of pagans. Yamani put in there. All right, who else has got one? Catherine. The Amplified. By abolishing in his own crucified flesh the hostility caused by the law with his commandments <laughs> contained in the ordinances which he satisfies so that in himself he might be. See that? Can everybody see how organized religion has now been taken over by Satan and his messengers as said in Hazun Revelation 12, 9? They changed, they set aside the commandments of Yahuwah for the traditions. And they're, why do you think they're pushing Greek so hard? Why do y'all think they're pushing the Greek so hard? Dwayne, you got, this is crazy. They push Greek so hard because they know that you can get some Greek scholars to go along with those Greek words there. They know you can do, well, I'm telling y'all. Look, they know you can get some Greek scholars to push tone the moon and dogmason as commandments of Yahuwah. They know they can get Greek scholars to do it. They got professors in these institutions, in theology schools that are telling you that tone them on, dogmason, and there's a few other uh, Greek words that they use to say that those are related to the commandments of Yahuwah, of the Most High. And so this is why you see people that try to say that Shaul is a false prophet. 
is because they don't understand Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. And that's what Kappa said. Peter says, if you're not, if you're not learned, Paul's writings are going to fool you. And, and see, Paul was here to do a big sort. I think Yahuwah used Paul to write in such a way to see who really loves him. All right, there's another one. Emily's got one up. See, look, having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Look at that. Look at that, Emily. This is an aversion that has removed corrupted names. And then they put the law of commands. What do y'all think somebody's going to do? When you write in the law of commands, what do you think they're going to attach that to, everybody? Y'all understand how, how dangerous this thing is with the Greek translation? Yvette said it. Paul forces us to seek. You're going to have to dig because he's a high-level scholar. Y'all got to be shocked because y'all looking in, y'all are looking in not only Greek translations, y'all are pulling up and putting in the chat translations that are supposed to be, right, geared to, and I'm telling you that these brothers and sisters, they were doing the best they could with what they knew to work with. And I'm hoping that this challenges them to go, I, I don't care if they go get it corrected and sell. Sell. I want the word of Yahuwah spread throughout the entire world. And maybe one day we can all get together and go, look, we're going to get, we got true scriptures. That's it. But if not, you should get your version to get in line, learn from what we're doing here and get your version lined up to get rid of these things that are misleading people and, and driving them straight into the pit of the lake of fire. Would y'all agree? Okay, let's finish this chapter. Because y'all know this was hot. Verse 6. Now watch. Now that we understand what Shaul's talking about, we can finish this and know how to go out and make disciples. He reconciled both groups into one body in a lure through the stake. Not the cross. Through the stake, which ended the hostility between a Lua and ourselves. Beautiful. He came and preached peace to you that were far away from a Lua and to those that were near to him. So now he's saying that Yahuwah, who came as Yahusha HaMashiach, he came to talk to the Gentiles and to the ones that were born of the circumcised, the Yahudim. But his message was first through the lost sheep of Israel. And then he said, this will go throughout all nations. So his message was always for everybody, but there was an order in how he did it. That's all. It's very simple, very plain. Now watch this. Verse 18. We both now have access to the Father through Mashiach by one spirit. Look how simple this is. He, what, what, what Shaul's doing is bringing us together. He's not throwing away the commandments. He's saying this old covenant that made it no way. Because you had to be born. You're coming through that line of Abraham and such. In order to have a, you couldn't get in any other way. So now he said, through Mashiach, Yahuwah Mashiach, you've got this access, verse 19. So you are now no longer strangers and foreigners. You have become fellow citizens with the set apart ones. And you are part of a Lewis household. He's preaching the hope because these people are thinking, man, well, there's no way we can get to that, that, that Alua over there. But now they're going, what? You mean to tell me that when Yahuwah Mashiach came and died, I can be part of that eternal life too? Verse 20. As part of Alua's household, you are built on the foundation of the emissaries, the apostles, aka apostles, and the prophets. And the cornerstone 
is Yahuwah Mashiach himself. <laughs> he said, you're part of all of this. You now get to take possession from the beginning. Just repent, come out of those sinful ways. And now you're in here with us. 21, the entire building is joined together in him. And it continues to grow into a set apart dwelling place that is dedicated to the master. So he's saying this building of Yahuwah Mashiach, him being the cornerstone, is growing into this massive dwelling place. Guess what it's called? The New Jerusalem. 22, Mashiach is building you into a place where Alua lives in the spirit. He said, we're going into this place with Alua, with the most high. Does everybody get this? But, but if we don't understand this part, this power guy that now we've exposed the entire world to, if we don't understand this part, we're going to let old King James and all these other crazy pagan translations get away with putting the word command or commandments in a place where they have no business. They have no part there. We're talking about namusa, ordinances, decrees, customs. And even in Greek, tonema, rules, behaviors, general laws, not the great commandments. We're not talking about dogmason. Or I could say we are talking about dogmason, just decrees and ordinances, but it wasn't even put there. It was talking about even less general than that in that verse. It was talking about just general rules and behaviors, general laws. It didn't even go into the decrees and the ordinances. And they used that to do what? To mislead the entire world. Now, didn't I tell y'all we're going to blow it up? <laughs> Look at that other version. Look at that AMP. Y'all just keep pulling them up. It's ridiculous. So they said, I'm flabbergasted. That's why we got to do this thing. Not hope, not wish, not maybe. We got to spread. We had operation spread time. We still got a goal to knock out. Let's get this goal out of the way. Everybody get over to tsnt.org and do something to keep moving. We're pouring more today. We're pouring more into marketing to get this word out. So what's going to happen today? We're going to take this video. We're going to make some, some explosive parts of this video. Or I might just do a separate video and break this down. And then we're going to market this everywhere and show the deception. And we're going to promote the true scriptures. And when we do, that takes money. That's this bottom line. And so the more access to funds we got to spread the word, the more people come out of the deception. So when you sow in the TSNT.org, and then we give you benefits. If you get to the package level, you're getting all these benefits. You're going to get the true scripture. You're going to get the real New Testament Brit Hadash that's slated to come out sometime in, in pagan month, April 2024. We're just a few months away. Right? We're just a few months away and you get a chance to have your name. If you become package qualified, your name goes on that second t-shirt. We got the one for the people that was involved in the seven-week campaign and then we got all of them plus the people that came in past 1231. So everybody from pagan month, January 1st, all the way to the 31st that gets package qualified, your name, we, that, that t-shirt should be, the name should be so little, loaded all the way down. Thank you, Sister Annette, for that super. It goes towards the campaign. But we want everybody to go to another level. Now, this is great word. Nobody I know is teaching like this. Teaching the truth. You want to know why? We, I keep proving to y'all over and over and over again. All these translations 
they're influenced by King James. They try to say they're not. They try to say that they're not influenced by this. But see, if you got a real scholar like myself, I can sit there and go, up. Huh? But see, not only a real scholar, you can't have any other agendas. You can't be influenced. You can't be bought. You can't buy us and promote the truth. We've been doing this since 2007. Think about that. We didn't start any campaigns. Allow, people have been trying to contribute to us for years. We, said, nah, we didn't even make it away. Yahuwah said, spread my word. Push it out. I said, well, how are we going to do it? He said, open up and let people sow into the kingdom. They're doing stuff with their money, but hardly any of them know how to put it in a place where the actual truth is going to get out, spread to the world. He says, now go challenge them with Maliki Yahoo. Chapter three, the right way, because everybody here is, you know, bring the whole tithes into the storehouse. I'm talking about planning to the storehouse of Yahuwah, the real stuff. See, TSNT, that's about as raw and authentic as you're going to get with the word of Yahuwah. In the world, it's the most important project since Yahushua resurrected. There's no, there's no other project more important than that. You want to know what? There is no scripture we can find that's out there. Any translation. How many translations are there? I mean, you open up the app. Look, I got, a, I got an app here. And there, I'm going to tell you, this is what's nuts. I don't think I've ever done what I'm going to do right now. Watch this. You open up these translations. Now watch. You got the Geneva, the 21st century King James, the American Standard Version, Amplified Version, the Authorized King James, the BRG Bible, the Common English Bible, the Complete Jewish Bible, the Darby Translation, the Disciples Literal New Testament, the Douay Reims 1899, 1899 Amended, version, the easy to read version, the easy, the English standard version, the expanded Bible, God's words translation, Holman's Christian standard translation, international standard version, J.B. Phillips, New Testament, Jubilee Bible 2000, King James version, Lexham English Bible, Living Bible, modern English version, Mount's reverse interlinear version, Names of God Bible, New American standard, New Century version, New English translation, New International Reader's Version, New International Version, uh, New King James Version, New Life Version, New Living Translation, Orthodox Jewish Bible, The Message, The Voice, The Tree of Life Version, The Wycliffe Bible, Young's Literal Translation. That's just some on this app. Listen, none of them are accurate. All of them got hundreds of thousands of errors in it. Everyone I just read. Everyone. Think about this. So what is the most important project since Yahuwah came as Yahusha to the earth, born, was impaled, died, and then resurrected, went back on high, poured his spirit out, the initial push of the emissaries and the apostles, right? The initial push. Then they got slaughtered. And now his whole word has been suppressed and drug into the ground, almost into oblivion. What's the most important project in the world? TSNT.org, period. And I keep proving it to you Time and time again, I come on these lives, I'm putting it up, and y'all can see where I'm just coming out of translation, because I still got to go in and make corrections, I'm in there typing so fast. Think about it. You can participate and propel and sow into the project. But right now, we're in operation spread. Do y'all want to spread it? Then you got to go to tsnt.org and turn it up. Because I'm ready to turn it up. But we only turn it up as much as the body. The 144, we might. Like real ones. Like a, I'm sitting there watching as an elder going, who's consistently, I'm watching their lives. I'm watching their words. I'm seeing coming on live. I'm watching. We got probably about, what, 20 hardcore of the 144? 
that if I call you on a Zoom and I ask you, what are the names? What Tell me the names of the prophets, the real names. Just give me the first, give me the top 10 prophets, the most quoted top 10 prophets of all time. Tell me their names and what their names mean. You know, you're going to probably have maybe what, 10, 20 that can do that. So I've got a responsibility as an elder in Israel to bring and teach and raise up. At the same time, I got to translate every day. I got to translate every day. I'm on the front line. Y'all pray for me. It takes a lot of time, effort, and energy. And sometimes I go so far and I just like, just like on Shabbat, I didn't wake up to one o'clock. I was so just spent of giving everything I got. But I know, I know that I'm entrusted with this word and the team, the support team. I know it. I know it. And I know that when we get the team and they get in that program and they start pushing out videos and different content and they market it everywhere, I know more and more people are coming into the body. And that comes from you all. We're going to keep doing what we do. We're gonna, if nobody supported, promote the truth even a dime, I already know. Almost every one of y'all got here before you gave anything. And you can go back and look at years of videos. You got four years of videos. You got a content on the website that's been setting there since 2007. And we got full production. Multi-thousands of dollars in video production we put out. No, didn't even send nothing to anybody. So this ain't no about no money first with us. We, we I'm telling y'all, we, y'all are going to take care of us. We got businesses that are growing. He's blessing us. We're going to pour even more from the businesses. I'm talking to Yahuwah. I got covenants with Yahuwah. So we're going to do so. But you, you have an opportunity to get that blessing from you. Go in that mirror and look at Yahuwah and go, I planted it, your kingdom. Because if you don't do it with TSNT, what are you doing that has this much impact in the world? Somebody got to lead. And it ain't easy being up on the front line as the leaders. Y'all know that. We take arrows every day, people shooting at us. Y'all not getting them arrows shot at y'all. So y'all have an opportunity. Let's get go over to TSNT. Look at that portion of the... We got another big one. Right after Operation Spread, we got Operation Spread 2 that involves... More marketing, but it involves the app. Y'all want the correct calendar app? We got to now pour money into that app and get that app done to promote the truth calendar app. And it's going to have all kind of material on there too that we make available to the world. We're going in. So we love y'all. Hopefully this message shows y'all. Man, oh man, we exposed it. Y'all saw, y'all saw Apasayim. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 15. We just pulled all your clothes off before the world. Them Greek clothes that's been misleading people for centuries. We just showed you naked and said, showed you how foul you are. And now we got the truth. And we got to keep promoting the truth. Y'all get over. Help get this word out there because people are counting on you. Somebody out there right now is going to come to Yahuwah because you put it in and support it. That's going to happen. And I love you for that. I can't wait to talk to y'all again because I got another hot one tomorrow coming up. It's going to get hotter. Bye-bye. Love y'all. TSNT.org. Make a change. 